Hello and welcome back to Hot Stuff, a talk show where the conversations are always hot and the tea is scalding. We're your hosts, Jillian and Jessica, who is back in the U.S. And for our first topic today, we will be discussing the Taylor Swift Ticketmaster disaster. Jessica, I'll let you take it from here. I know you're a big Swifty and you tried <laughs> to buy tickets for Taylor Swift. How did it go? So, um, buying tickets abroad, um, that was really interesting um, <laughs> because it was the, it went on sale at like 10 a.m. local time and then I had to do like the math for the conversion of when it was going to be my time. Um, I ended up waiting in line. The whole process probably took five or six hours. Um, oh my god! Yeah, it was fine. I was like, I was packing in the middle. It was fine. Um, I so I, I get in line, uh, and then ten, five minutes after being in like the queue, um, the line stops. There's a message, a warning message that says the line has stopped moving. The line is paused. We'll pre, <laughs> re, we'll begin again shortly. An hour and a half later, then they're like, okay, the line's going to start moving again. There's 2,000... It's a digital line! What do you mean the line's going to start moving? It was a whole mess, okay? Because they, the venues, they opened up the lines for 10 a.m. local time. So East Coast went in first because it was 10 a.m. there first. So then all those people were trying to buy tickets. And then it became 10 o'clock central time. So then you had to hold all of those people in line as well at the same time. So it just like shut down the system. Uh, and then they're like, we weren't expecting this many people. You sent out the codes. You <laughs> sent out a code so you would have a specific amount of people for this pre-sale. And then you weren't expecting the amount of people to show up. The number you chose? Anyway. You picked this number. <laughs> you, you picked, picked it. the number. You know. And we know how many fans Taylor Swift has. It's a massive fan base. I think it's just, yeah. I had a bunch of people in my dorm building who were trying to buy Taylor Swift tickets and they're sitting there in the hallway on the floor with their laptop with like tears in their eyes and they're like pulling their hair out and I'm like, oh my God, it's Taylor Swift, bro. It's not that deep. Because like, I'm personally not a Taylor Swift fan, but like watching all these people have breakdowns yeah. like in my building and knowing that you were buying tickets too and then seeing all the yeah. TikToks after of like people bawling their eyes out because yeah. they're like, I was finishing up the payment and it sent me back to the end and I'm freaking out and I just spent like a whole paycheck on Taylor yeah. Swift tickets yeah. and it kicked me out. I'm like, oh my God. No. Like, this is going to be a mess. And yeah. I can't wait to see how it turns out. I like, heard so oh. many people would get to the front of the line and then they would get sent back to the end or like they'd have, they'd be trying to check out and then there would be an error or the pre-sale code wouldn't work like to, to even look. And then they'd have, they were just like, well, this is the code I was sent. It was a whole disaster. And now there's so many on resale site, like StubHub, like that were supposed to go to like those people in the line waiting. So it was a whole mess. Um, but now Ticketmaster is under investigation by the Justice Department. So karma still there <laughs> that's the real tea <laughs> let's get the police involved <laughs> i think that's funny i mean it's funny to me that it's like it's so simple it's just a ticket sale and i don't know how they managed to mess this up so badly i mean how many concerts sell tickets every single year especially taylor swift like with how many fans there are buying tickets it's just like seeing this all blow up in everyone's faces it's like wow this, I, yeah. What was a more impactful time, the Renaissance or the Taylor Swift Ticketmaster disaster? Taylor Swift bringing down <laughs> monopolies. We love to see it. All right, that's all we have time for right now, but we will be right back after commercial for our next topic, Lady Gunga's boomerang right here on <laughs> Hot Stuff. What does it mean to be a Warhawk? It means allowing myself to dream big and think outside the box. Pushing the limits of what I think is possible. Seeing ideas through from start to finish. Collaborating with professors and peers. And seizing opportunities in the community to put my knowledge to use. I'm studying abroad. Learning another language. And listening to the stories of others. I'm making lifelong friends and fearlessly sharing my gifts with the world. As a war hack, I stay balanced. Take great care of myself. And get out of my comfort zone. I refuse to let the past determine my future. And I'm taking confident steps in the direction of my dreams. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. And other times it couldn't be more exciting. But I will keep my goals in mind and never quit. Cause that, that's the Warhawk way.
The UW-Whitewater Bookstore is your one-stop shop for apparel, textbooks, and technology. Stop in for a wide selection of gifts from our alumni, family, and name brand sections. Need to purchase or rent a textbook? Head downstairs to Textbook Services. Check out our new custom shop and create personalized apparel for your organization. Need a charger, laptop, or headphones? Our new technology section has everything you might need. For more information and bookstore hours, visit uwwhitewaterbookstore.com. Welcome to the Anderson Library, a destination that offers many things to students and other people. At the library, there's a whole host of resources that you have support for your academics in terms of books, databases, other resources that streaming videos that you're going to use for classes. And we do pet therapy once a week alternating Mondays and Tuesdays. So that is something that any and all student, staff, and community members can come in and join us for. Well on the main floor of the library we have a big chess set so that's pretty popular to have students come in, play chess, people get really into it. You can reserve a study room or if it's just you're looking for something fun to do on the weekend, you can come check out our video games or our board games. You can also come check out and get a snack at their cafe. There is plenty of things to do at the Anderson Library besides just studying. For more information about the library's events and other topics, go to uwwedu library. Welcome back to Hot Stuff. Our next topic is Lady Gaga and her faking of boomerang for Instagram. I've never been more entertained by something. I think it is the cutest thing ever. And that sounds like so, I don't know, like patronizing to be like, aw, that's so cute for her to do that. But she's sitting there doing like the boomerang motion and it looked so good, but it's very clearly like her faking it. And it's just like, yeah. I think it's the funniest thing ever, personally. <laughs> That made my week. I think it's adorable. Because <laughs> she doesn't pull like the hair in the same way. I know. So like you yeah, can tell. Yeah, she's sitting there like this. Yeah. It's something oh that I would have done before I had like Instagram. Like if I <laughs> wanted to like pretend, you know? So like I would have faked it myself. And I think it's it's so charming that she, <laughs> that she did it too. It's just, it's so humbling. <laughs> it's just, I mean like, Millennial core. Her not knowing how to do a boomerang, like, or does she genuinely think that that's how boomerangs work? <laughs> like, does she think that people are faking it and she's like, oh, I can do that? Or is she like, I don't know how to use the settings, so I'll just fake it, no one will notice? We need I want to know. Dive. Miss Gaga, I need to talk. I just want to talk. Next up on Hot Stuff, that's our next guest, is going to be Lady Gaga sitting right here, we, and it's going to be great. We need to do a full investigation on if. If she has, has she done another boomerang? Ever? I don't know. Like, is, you, like you said, is that how she the thinks they, is that how she thinks they're made? I'm so invested right now. <laughs> I know. And like, everybody knew immediately that it was fake because you could see her doing the motions and that it wasn't the same. And like, if it was a boomerang, it would have been like, like a genuine boomerang, it would have been like such a, it's like pretty mid. <laughs> like it's just her like showing off her makeup and her hair. But like the fact that she's faking it is so camp. It's so cute. I love it so much. It's, I don't know. This, I love seeing people not know how to use social media. Like, um, oh my gosh. When want, Doja Cat, when Doja Cat like tweeted something and like, oh my God, Dylan O'Brien tweets at her. That's an example. And, and she says, they know how social media works. I know she knows how social media works, but I think it's funny. Like, and she responds with just Maze Runner. Yeah. I think it's funny. I oh, think yeah. it's cute. Like, I love just little, like, social media bits like that that aren't, like, revolutionary, but it's just, like, a funny interaction or, like, a funny post that just, it's a very mid thing. I thought you were going to be like, yeah, when Tom Holland posted a story twice, or, like, he posted one without <laughs> no. any audio. That's like, that's funny. what I think is, like, a similar thing. It's of, funny, like, but I think it's, like, I mean, like, I love just very mid social media <laughs> posts that just make me, like, look at it twice, just, like, with a, huh? And then I keep scrolling. It's funny. I just like stupid interactions like that. And I love yeah. seeing celebrities do stupid stuff like that that aren't that big of a deal. But I just look at it for like maybe five extra yeah. seconds like, okay. 
I think her uh, her makeup brand is going to get a lot of traction now. Well, our next topic is Zac Efron. <laughs> Jillian, do you want to start? Okay. There's a lot to unpack with Zac Efron, I think. Um, I know the pictures have been going on on like, social media of him with like the bowl cut <laughs> and like, the little lad it's, outfit. Okay. I don't know how else to describe it other than like a little pilgrim <laughs> outfit. <laughs> I know. Okay, I'm going to say just this. Zac Efron was my first celebrity crush. And I know he's had a couple controversial photos come out recently. <laughs> um, the first one, people were like, oh my god, did Zac Efron get like jaw surgery Did plastic, he get plastic surgery, surgery and you know, fillers you know what if zach efron tells me that he was puffy because he had wisdom teeth surgery i'm gonna believe him he said okay. he broke his jaw he said it was wisdom teeth surgery. <laughs> he said he broke his jaw he said it was busted and that he had to have like it fixed and that's why his jaw is so swollen and like whatever but like okay look me in the eyes <laughs> through the camera <laughs> all the viewers out there do you believe that because I don't know any time that someone has had surgery that they gave you lip fillers. Personally, I don't buy it. I don't see like, I mean, there's so many celebrities who go out and get plastic surgery right. and you can't even tell because like they do a good job. Yeah. It's only the bad plastic surgery that people notice. And mm -hmm. honestly, with how much of the public eye Zac Efron's been in and mm -hmm. like he's known for being like jacked and like a very good looking guy, like his entire career, even when he was a teenager, it's like I could see him going out to get plastic surgery, it being flubbed and him being like too embarrassed to say it because plastic surgery with men is like such a taboo thing. Mm -hmm. So like, honestly, I don't really buy this story that it was like a wisdom teeth surgery or like he broke his jaw because to me, it just looks like a flubbed plastic surgery. But like he does look different now mm -hmm. in like newer pictures, like with the one with the, the crappy wig. Um, <laughs> I love that I don't picture know why. so much. I, oh my gosh. He's, I know it's because it's a movie and the, the wrestler had that haircut, but it's a bad haircut and I'm going to say it. It's a wrestler? I didn't know the it's context. It's a wrestler. <laughs> He had a bad haircut and they decided to I keep it. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I did not know what the context of that picture was. Right. So I thought it was a new berries and cream commercial, but pop off. Sorry. That's my bad. Oops. <laughs> He's making a movie, I guess. All right. Good for him. So our next, that's all we have for right now. We'll be right back after commercial for our next topic Starbucks versus Dunkin' on Hot Stuff. We'd love to show you what it's like to be a Warhawk. Come on! Don't miss out on your chance to be a Warhawk at UW Whitewater. You belong here! The P.B. Poorman Pride Center is the place to go for LGBTQ plus resources, information, and community. Located in the Warhawk Connection Center, while there, you can meet people like Mia. And I serve Impact as president this fall, as well as working for the Pride Center. Impact is our queer LGBTQ plus and ally organization on campus. We meet once a week, and we do a lot of social events, as well as education events. It feels... Like I'm way more accepted here than when I was in high school. It is like a really big family. Along with acceptance, in the Pride Center you can find a little library, a clothing closet, and a satellite location of the Warhawk Food Pantry. It, it just feels like a home to me, you know? It feels like my home away from home and there's such a community here that is so wonderful and full of joy. For more information, follow the Pride Center on Instagram at uww underscore PRC. Crew is a faith-based organization for UW-Whitewater students. Their mission? To create an inclusive Christian community for students looking to explore or grow their faiths. For me, specifically, it's been amazing to just have people to walk alongside uh, with my Christian journey on. They always say to like go and experience new things while you're at college, and I think this is just another one of those things that you should experience. Crew welcomes all students and is held at Summers Auditorium on Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. Come join our crew. Welcome to Jitters Coffee House. Located on the first floor of the Wells Towers, Jitters is a student-run coffee lounge and offers a variety of coffee and ice cream-based drinks and is home to many entertaining programs, including live music, gamer trivia nights, and other performances. Coordinate your activity by emailing jitters at uww.edu. Jitters is completely run by volunteers who can earn service hours and even receive a free drink during their shift. 
Stop in tonight at Jitters Coffee House, where fun events and community come together. Welcome back to Hot Stuff. Our next topic is Starbucks versus Dunkin' Donuts. Um, I know, Jess, you're not a big coffee drinker. I am a big coffee drinker. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not a big coffee drinker. I'm a tall glass of milk and creamer and sugar with a splash of coffee drinker with French vanilla flavoring, as I should be. I am lactose intolerant, yeah. and I will take that. I will take it every day. It's delicious. Mm. That's interesting. <laughs> Big that, cup of milk really for the lactose that's intolerant really, drinker. Uh, it's not just milk, it's creamer also. <laughs> and, and a, a little of bit of spice in there. A little, maybe. A little, little drip of coffee in there <laughs> and a lot of ice. I personally am a Dunkin' Donuts stan. Um, yeah. The only reason I go to Starbucks is to take my dog, Joe Mama, with me. Uh, he's a big fan of the pup cup, the puppuccino. I'll tell him, hey, Joe, you want to go to Starbucks? And his little ears go up, and he's all excited. And I like having him as my co-pilot. But personally, if I choose between the two, I like going to Dunkin' Donuts because I like the chaos of never knowing what I'm going to get. <laughs> Which sounds terrible, and it is. I order the same thing every time. I get a medium French vanilla iced coffee with cream and sugar. Same words every time. I get a different drink every time. I never know what the ratio of creamer to coffee is going to be. I never know how much sugar they're going to put in. It's like, there's a specific line I'm thinking of that I'm not going to say on TV, but Jessica, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I just... It means a lot to me. I love my coffee. I'll always go to Dunkin' Donuts. Starbucks is just so expensive. And I just, big, big fan of Dunkin' Donuts. See, yeah, I really don't have a horse in this race um, because I go, I, they both have chai tea lattes, um, which is for the non-coffee drinkers. That's what you get. Um, but I will say, Starbucks has cake pops and uh, I'm a big fan of those. Um, and I love the little Starbucks mugs and like cups and stuff and Duncan's I think are ugly so um, oh my god I, you did not just say Starbucks that Starbucks cups are so cute tell me I'm wrong I'm the not little gonna tell mugs, you you're the right. little mugs with like the little like states on them or like the Star Wars planets like that's fun that's cute it's I quirky. like it what about uh, the Dunkin Donuts <laughs> elf cosmetics crossover huh no one's heard of that I so, cannot believe you, you know, just said that. To I don't me. think we can even the compare donut that. primer. The donut primer. It's so cute. It looks like a little donut. It's so cute. I will say, Starbucks does have cuter merch. Exactly. But that merch is so overpriced that I'm not going to buy it anyways. I just like looking at it from a distance when I walk through Target. But it's cute, and that's what matters. Making but Starbucks superior. I do like the Dunkin' Donuts color scheme better though. It's funky. It's orange cute. and you, brown. Okay, if you it's it's orange and pink. If you go to Dunkin' Donuts, you're an Ulta girl. You go to Ulta. If you like Starbucks, you go to Sephora because Starbucks is boring and Sephora is boring. Alta and Duncan are cute and quirky, and I like cute and quirky. I like walking in there with my antisocial personality. I love sitting in there and ordering my iced coffee and sprinting out of there. But while I'm in there being anxious ordering my stuff, I like to be surrounded by funky colors. That's interesting, because earlier you said Starbucks was quirky for their cups. Anyway, we'll be right back after commercial for our next segment of today's show, Person of the Week, right here on Hot Stuff. <laughs> The Royal Purple, the best place for all the latest news around the community and campus of UW-Whitewater. Here you'll find all different types of weekly news stories, including sports, arts and rec, biz and tech, and even fun and interesting things like trendsetter columns and the tweet of the week. The Royal Purple has a full staff to handle all of your advertising and article needs. 
Ad managers and sale representatives can help you get your ad and seasonal print issues online at royalpurplenews.com and out on our social media platforms. Editors and journalists would love to write features about your organization and follow-ups about your important events. For more information on student employment opportunities, advertisement services, or anything news, contact the Royal Purple over at capital R, capital P, at uww.edu, or give us a call at 262-472-5100. Stop by our office and say hi on campus in McCutcheon Hall, room 113. For all of your local campus community news, check out the Royal Purple here at University of Wisconsin-Whitewater. The Department of Communication offers students the opportunity to explore the world through the faculty-led travel study program. The course consists of both in-class lecture and a three-week travel component at the end of the semester. You have a life that is insanely busy. You don't have to give up so much time to do a three-week travel study and you can compact a lot in three weeks. The course is worth three credits and is open to all majors. The program features group travel with peers and faculty. I think the benefit of traveling in a group like the Travel Study is there's always somebody there to experience new things with you and you always have new friends to gain. Travel Study offers a variety of travel destinations including a trip to Ireland every other year. Develop new relationships, participate in enriching cultures, and experience personal growth while abroad. With the Travel Study it was so great being able to go to places and really experience the value that they can give to our own culture and just to me as a person. For more information please visit Welcome back to Hot Stuff. It's time for Person of the Week, a segment where we discuss the week's most incredible, influential person. This week's Person of the Week is Jenna Ortega. All right, so um, I think for anyone who's seen the new Wednesday show, I think we can all agree she did a really good job in that. Um, I love the fact that she choreographed her own uh, dance sequence oh. for, for the, the dance like viral on TikTok right now. Oh my gosh, so many people doing yeah. the dance. I yeah. think it's cute. <laughs> it is. And like, I think she's been doing like all the interviews and stuff where she talks about like um, how she became Wednesday. And I don't know, I think, she, I think she did a great job as Wednesday. I'm a fan. I think she, she is the horror, she's the new horror girly. And did you see that thing where she said that she used to do autopsies on dead animals? I did not. Excuse me? <laughs> I know. That's creepy, oh. but like on brand for Wednesday. You're like, yeah, I'm crunching the numbers and that checks out. Checks out. Yeah, I think she's a great actress. I mean, I I didn't really realize how many shows I've seen her in until yeah. she was really brought into the public eye with Wednesday. Um, big fan of the TV show, the Netflix original You. I love that show so much, and she did a great job yeah. in that show. I think she's a spectacular actress, and mm -hmm. I know she's been acting since a very young age, mm -hmm. and I think she's great. And I haven't gotten a chance to watch Wednesday yet, but I know it's on my watch list for sure. With how many people are talking about how great the show is, I can't pass it. I can't miss yeah. it. She's booked and busy, and I love that for her. She's so charming, too. In all her inter interviews, she is just, she's so sweet. I love her so much. And it's, it's crazy to me that she's like our age. I know. <laughs> it makes me feel old. I know. The celebrities that are like popping off right now are the same age as me. And I'm sitting in my dorm room eating like an entire bag of barbecue Lay's potato mm -hmm. chips. And I'm like, slay, pop off. <laughs> Love that for you. We are the same. We're the same. She's just like me for real. <laughs> All right, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today's show, but be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Hot Stuff. Remember, the conversations are always hot and the tea, scalding. We're your hosts, <laughs> Jessica and Jillian, and we'll see you next time.